What's going on? I'm Fender PSVR here. In this video, I'll be doing a quick review of the game Transformers Beyond Reality. So the overview of this game is basically you are a human in an exosuit and you are an ally of the Astrobots trying to defend Energon that you lately found in the game and stopping the Decepticons from using it for bad terms. So starting off with the story mode, there is a story mode and an arcade mode. The story mode, you go on this wild adventure uh, with your friends, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Grimlock, Ratchet. Uh, you go on a story to try to stop the Decepticons, Optimus Prime, you know, and others. But the main thing of all is that the story mode uses this comic book style storytelling that was kind of cool. You don't really see that in many, many games. Almost kind of like Moss a little bit. Uh, Moss did the little comic book style thing. This is actually like a comic book style. Has you in there. Has your friends. And it has the enemies as well. Everyone's talking. The audio is good. Uh, it's basically like a reading a comic book. So I thought that was pretty cool for the story mode. There are six levels. Each level you can play either on story mode. Normal mode. Hard mode. Or brutal mode. Now each mode that you pick is going to be challenging depending on what type of classes that you use and yes there are classes there are diff three different classes there is a shield class sword class and a minigun class my favorite was the shield class because i was able to protect myself with the shield while using my main gun you have the sword class which you use a sword in your left hand and your main gun in your right hand and you get to slash bullets and send the bullets that you slash with your sword back to your enemy to blow them up instantly. So it's almost like a shield, but you're able to retaliate the enemy's bullets with their death. The last but not least class is the minigun class. And that's right. You have a minigun in your left hand and your main gun in your right hand. Now you just can't fire the weapon, your secondary weapon, which is your shield or your sword repeatedly. It takes energy to do that. And the energy that you have to collect in the game is orange with, the, I think there are arrows. The, I don't know the right term for it, but you have that. There are also other pickups that you get in game to help you and assist you throughout the level, such as health, your energon, which is your in game currency for you to collect throughout the game to upgrade your weapons. Yes, you can upgrade your weapons. Um, the secondary, like, bar that you fill up in order to use your secondary skill and it will drain so the more you have it maxed out the better you'll be able to be and the chances are that you will be able to hold your secondary weapon to use in game and also your infinite ammo infinite ammo once you collect it you're able to fire weapons uh, that you have until it runs out so it's your health um, your energon your infinite ammo and the boost for secondary gun, which is what it's called, which is basically your boost for your secondary weapon. I found this game to be pretty active because you are dodging things such as enemy projectiles. And on top of that, you're also dodging, uh, I call it the, the limbo, uh, the limbo line. Basically, if you get hit by this line and you don't dodge, you will take damage. That comes and goes Every so often in the level, you basically got to keep your head on the swivel. Uh, you will be sidetracked by watching, for instance, Optimus Prime and Megatron go at it, but you got to keep your eyes on the road in front of you, as if I was a driver. But it's an on rail shooter, so it's an on rail shooter, which means you're basically not moving at all. You're just on a platform, and the game is pushing you forward, and you're shooting things as you progress through the level. Um, I found the dodging and the... Uh, crouching in this game very one to one it was very VR like and I enjoyed it um, the kickback projectiles that you're able to shoot and sometimes uh, destroy and also dodge in the game that was very active as well and I feel like that that was a great integration into the game although when you're firing at enemies <clears throat> um other than the upgradable stuff that you can use and able to assist you, there's also upgradables in game. So you're able to upgrade your main weapon, such as the damage. You're able to upgrade your health, which is depending on how much health you have in game. 
as you progress throughout the level. You have your secondary weapon uh, upgrade that you can use for the damage and recharge rate of how fast your gun recharges or secondary gun recharges. And you also have your ultra weapon, which is your beam or your grenade launcher. And that's also how much damage you know you can deal to enemies or how fast of a rate you were able to recharge that weapon for your game. So I thought that was pretty well interesting and well thought out based on the energon that you use for the end game currency to upgrade your weapons, yourself and your health all in one to become a more powerful human to aid the Astrobots throughout the story. Uh, the campaign is pretty good. I would say that the graphics of the game, they were blurry. They were blurry, but it wasn't game breaking. I was able to still see what's going on, but it's not the best looking VR game, but it's not the worst, you know, looking VR game as well. Uh, other than the classes, the sword, the shield, the tank, and the sword, I managed to use the tank class, my personal favorite the most, to basically beat the game on Brutal as well because there's a lot of projectiles, so I was able to protect myself and also shoot. <clears throat> um... I love the fact that I was able to watch the Transformers, such as uh, the Astrobots and the Decepticons face off right in front of me as I'm progressing through the level. That was a really cool thing to see. And that's a very cool thing for any Transformers fan to witness in a game. Uh, I found that very, it was, it was very amazing because I'm only six foot two and I put that in the game for me to be six foot two and just seeing these tower robots, it was pretty amazing. Uh, like I said, the ultra gun that you have is either the beam or the rocket launcher. The beam shoots a continuous beam up until it, you know, overheats and then it has to recharge at a certain amount of time, depending on, you know, what your upgradable is like, depending on if you have it maxed out, it recharges faster. Same for your frag launcher, which is also, uh, which is also another ultra gun, which basically fires a powerful bomb, destroying a whole bunch of enemies. And then you only get to use that once and it has to recharge. So I'm um, going to start with the bad things about the game. The bad things, the game wasn't as clear. Um, the graphics were kind of blurry, but I say that they were only blurry because a lot of the stuff that you're looking at, it, you're looking further ahead as to down like in front of you. So the further away things are, that's in any VR game, but the further things are away from you, it's kind of blurry. But when things were close up, I was able to see it clear and then the graphics wasn't as bad. But overall, the graphics, they were okay. They weren't the best graphics, but they weren't the, the worst graphics. It was a little bit blurry, but it wasn't like game breaking. Uh, my trigger figure got tired, depending on when I was weak. I had to keep firing my main weapon when it wasn't powerful enough, and I had to keep shooting more bullets into enemies to destroy them, rather than if I was maxed out like I am now, and I have to shoot as much. But uh, beforehand, like when I first started, my finger was so tired. I had I was using this finger to shoot, but once this finger was tired, I, I switched over to my middle finger to shoot, and uh, I was able to, you know, have a break. Other than when I collected, if the ammo was able to just continuously fire repeatedly while holding the trigger down to rest my finger. <clears throat> I pray for infinite ammo. I would say that. Uh, another bad thing is that the game is about two hours maxed. I played through this game on Brutal and got through my stream in under two hours, I would say. Uh, when I first started, I think it was over a little bit over two hours where... I managed to get through the game and broadcast all my stuff either when I was live or when I saved it. Uh, but the story is a, is a short story. But for a $20 game, the story leveled itself out with the price that you were asking to pay for this game. I had the time of my life. Uh, another bad thing is there's still no trophy list. As you can see, the trophy list should be right here where my finger is. There's no trophy list. But I still collected trophies throughout the game. I don't know what's going on with that. I hope and pray that they do upload the trophies. I've been unlocking trophies, but I can't physically see the trophies. So the latest trophy that I unlocked when I played on Brutal Mode, and um, I looked at my trophies, looked at my notifications on my PS5, and it said that I had got 81% of the trophies. And most of these trophies has came, has come from me playing the game on Normal, uh, Hard, and then Brutal. So that's where most of the trophies come from. I did unlock a trophy in Arcade Mode, but I don't know what I did to unlock that. And uh, speaking of that, there is arcade mode, which is basically you just going through different levels, just seeing how long you survive 
and how long you can hold out against the Decepticons before you die. I would like to visit that again. I'll play through one time, stream that, check it out if you have it. But I'm going to play through that again now that I, I maxed out all the weapons and see how far I can go. But the RK mode is good in this too. So you get two modes for $20. So that's pretty good. And uh, I think that's really the only bad thing. I think the other bad thing is that there was not many variety of enemies. I think there's like four enemies total. You got your bugs that were crawling that shoot you. You got the little wasp looking creatures. You got the floaty little robots. And then you have the transformer bots. And you have your enemy projectiles. I would say those enemies because that's when they shoot and do damage to you. You got your um, the little beam that do damage to you. That's six. And uh, I think that's really it. And then you have your boss battles too, which happens at each at the end of each level, which uh, also gave a different variety of weapons because they shoot like little lasers at you, they shoot rockets at you. Uh, so that's seven right there. That's that's a kind of different variety. But the main enemies that you're facing throughout the maps, all through all throughout the maps, uh, the six levels is the beetles, the wasps that shoot heavy projectiles at you and then your boss battles and then you know your transformers that you face off uh, later in the game uh, which are the Decepticons but the different variety of robots they are pretty good to see different types of uh, things you can shoot throughout the level that explode and uh, yeah I would say the, the, the enemy variety it wasn't that much, but once you take into consideration of how much stuff is going on in the game, it kind of levels itself out. But that's really, I think that's not, that, that would be a bad thing in my book. Um, just the main thing that was shooting is really the floating robots and the beetles. So on to the good. The good thing about this game is that it has good replayability due to the fact that you can upgrade your weapons and your health and everything else that you're able to upgrade. Um, another good thing is you get to witness Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. You can see all their fighting action happen right in front of you while you're progressing through the level. There was a great use of 3D audio as well because uh, I could pinpoint exactly where I could hear an enemy and look and it'll be right there. Or if someone shoot from this way, I can hear them. Or uh, 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 Windblade, I discover her later. She flew in her jet like around me and I could like see her like flying and then people were following her like fly 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 it was it was such a good sight to see but that was crystal clear I was able to hear that so they did a great use of the 3d audio in this game that's one of my favorite things uh, I like the fact that you had a different class that you could choose from three different classes with three unique abilities like I said the shield you can block stuff and shoot the sword, you can slice the sword on the enemy's bullets and deal damage to them. And then the minigun, you have a minigun in your left hand. So you basically can dual wield weapons. That's basically your dual wield weapon class. You got your minigun in your left hand and your main weapon in your right hand. I like the fact how they, you know, did that. I like the fact that you were able to choose between two different ultra guns in the game. The beam and the frag launcher. I like the fact that you're able to collect currency to purchase those different upgrades for those weapons. I like the fact that you're able to have a different difficulty setting, even though the difficulty settings didn't feel like that challenging for me because I basically had a shield class. Um, I like the fact that there was an arcade mode included. You know, you get to challenge your friends or challenge yourself to try to see how high you can get in the score. Of a particular mode it's like a never it's like an endless mode for the arcade mode just seeing how long you can survive i like the overall challenge of the game it reminds me of other bullet hell shooters such as blast you the universe you know until the armor some blood it's on a rail shooter not many good on rail shooters on the PlayStation store but this one has been added to the great uh, category of the good on rail shooters and then the last thing i like about this game you can be active you choose to be active you want to have a chill session you know use your shield you know block stuff you shoot stand there or you can go crazy and use the sword and the minigun class and manually dodge and crouch and get out the way you know um, on a scale from 
bad to good to great to amazing, I will label this game as a good game because it is a good game. Play through many times, being on the hardest difficulty, uh, all the different things that they throw at you is a Transformers. Come on. The Transformers, I got to see uh, Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Ratchet, Grimlock, uh, Megatron, all of them. I got to see all of them. It was a very good time. And make sure when I watch the movies, I'm actually going to try to find the movies if possible to watch through them. This game made me want to uh, check out the Transformers history. I haven't been a real big Transformers fan, but this game has made me a fan. And um, yeah, if you haven't played this game or you haven't checked out the Transformers Beyond Reality video game, this would be the perfect time to do it. You're going to get a good game. Uh, it's going to be a short game, but you're going to get a good game. If you're a trophy hunter, you're going to get a lot of replayability like me trying to get the platinum and figuring out what you need to do in order to achieve the platinum. But if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, comment what you like, didn't like, if you like the game, if you hate the game, if you were wondering if you should beat the game or not, go ahead. I would do my best to comment. I know we always do our best to reply to all the people that leave comments on my channel. Uh, I love all y'all. Thank y'all for supporting me from my very first PSVR video to this one and all my other ones that I've broadcast and did reviews for and everything. But uh, trust from y'all. Beyond reality, this game is good. It's a good game. So check it out for yourself if you like to. But until then, this is going to conclude this video. Um, and I'll see you on the next one. This is the Fenner PSVR signing off. And this is Transformers Beyond Reality made by Metaphor. See you.